This summer, an article on euthanasia based on unbearable psychological suffering will be published in the British medical journal Open. Our research shows that one in three patients with a euthanasia request based on unbearable and untreatable psychological suffering dies by euthanasia. In an outpatient psychiatric clinical setting, I received 100 Dutch-speaking patients after they were referred mainly by their physician or by a life physician. This is a doctor who has joined the Life and Information Forum and is especially trained for further guidance and assistance on end-of-life decisions. Of the 100 of patients, 77 were females and 23 were males between 21 and 80 years old. 90 persons were previously diagnosed with more than one psychiatric disorder, mainly depression and or personality disorder. 38 patients have been referred for additional treatment or further testing. It is remarkable that 12 patients received an ASD diagnosis all Asperger syndrome. In total, almost half of the euthanasia requests were accepted. That means that the procedure of euthanasia could continue on legal grounds. Among them, the majority decided to actually die that way. But unfortunately, two patients committed suicide during the euthanasia procedure. 10 patients postponed or cancelled the euthanasia procedure themselves for different reasons. At the end of 2012, we also evaluated the other half of the group, whose request was not yet accepted. Almost 70% had meanwhile withdrawn their request. A minority had their procedure still ongoing. Four patients committed suicide, one patient died after palliative sedation and one patient died of his illness. An important finding from our study is that eight of the ten patients who postponed or cancelled the euthanasia procedure explicitly declared that having the option to die by euthanasia gave them enough peace of mind to continue living. When compared with the data of the Federal Control and Evaluation Commission, our group of psychiatric patients requested to die their, to end their life at a younger age with an average of 47 years. The overall group of patients who have undergone euthanasia for any reason, for instance somatic and or mental reasons combined, the majority of whom have been older than 60 years. Also, the male-to-female ratio is different. 77% of our patient group is female, while in the overall group the ratio is almost 50 to 50%. And last but not least, from the 35 patients who died by euthanasia, the relatives and the doctors performing euthanasia explicitly reported mainly a calm and smooth passing. Mostly, the procedure took place in domestic surroundings with their family and or friends, present at the time of the death. This is the first report on a relatively large series of requests for euthanasia from patients whose request is based on psychological suffering due to a psychiatric illness. These data draw attention to and deepen our understanding of the circumstances of a small but severely afflicted subgroup of psychiatric patients. But further research is needed, especially prospective quantitative and qualitative studies will lead to a better understanding of patients with psychiatric disorders who request euthanasia due to a unbearable psychological suffering.